Hey Ligari Nation, thanks for tuning in today. We're going to be showing you an awesome epoxy floor today. If you want more info on this kit, check the description below or visit our website at www.ligari.com. Before we get started on today's video, we wanted to let you know that we're on our way to 800,000 subscribers and we've noticed that a huge percentage of you guys that watch our videos every week are not subscribed to our channel. It only takes seconds out of your day to press that subscribe button, especially if you enjoy this content. We launch videos every week so you can get notified every time there's a new one. Thanks for all your support. We hope you enjoy the video. Okay, we're just applying the primer. Now notice where the roller is completely saturated and then we're just overlapping about half a roller width. Now depending on how big the space is, will determine how many times you need to dip, how far you'll need to roll that out. Um, but notice it pigments really, really well. So this is a black primer because the floor we're, we're doing will actually have a black base. So we always try to match the primer up with whatever makes that base color look beautiful. So anytime you dip and roll primer like this, same with our top coat, um, you always wanna dip it, saturate that roller, roll off just a little bit, and then kind of start near the middle and then roll it out towards the edges. That's how you're going to get the best distribution of that color. And then of course, when you get near the end, you'll just work your way out of that room or that area. And you can do this with uh, an 18 inch roller as well. All right, now we're going to lay out the base coat. So this is a black base coat. So we're just pouring some beads all the way across the area right here. Now this is 135 square feet. So this is a three gallon kit. We're just gonna use the squeegee like we always teach with that base coat. We're gonna use the squeegee and just try to move the material about 99% of the way all the way across that floor. And then once that base coat is laid out using the squeegee, then we'll just cross roll with the roller. And again, we'll use a 3 8 inch snap roller and uh, make sure you de-shed the rollers, roll it on some scotch tape. And you can also use an 18 inch roller for you doing larger areas. The 18 inch rollers make quick work of large areas. So he's just letting that kind of glide on the top. He's just applying a little bit of pressure. Notice that the edges are a little bit too thick. So he's just pulling that away from the edges and we'll try to get it near the middle of the floor now. Because once you have a roller, it's kind of tough to pull epoxy out from the walls. You want to soak that roller up, find the thickest spots of the floor and just really saturate that roller. That's, that's what we always like to do. Every aspect of that roller, the edges, just saturate that roller. And then once you've done that, you can kind of start cross rolling that whole area. Now, as a rule of thumb, you want to try to go wall to wall and it'll pick up, you know, the thick spots and, and leave it in the thin spots. And it kind of naturally does it. You just let that roller glide across the epoxy. You're not applying any pressure. The roller is doing absolutely everything right here in terms of distributing that epoxy. And once you've rolled it out one way, then we do what's called cross rolling and we'll roll it out the other way. So if you notice, just like what Tyler's doing here, he notices there's some thin spots on the floor. So you can kind of manipulate a little bit, even push hard with the roller and it kind of turns into a squeegee. But he's just working his way across that floor, trying to distribute that epoxy as best as possible. And again, the roller's doing all the work. He's not applying any pressure right here. He's just kind of holding it with one hand and just letting it kind of glide across the surface.
All right, now we have some titanium and some bright yellow. We're just gonna pour this into, into little puddles. That's gonna create a lot of depth in the floor and we just thought it'd be kind of a cool color combination to try. And we really like this, this technique. You've probably seen this in a lot of our videos, the puddle technique. So we're gonna dump highlights out all over the floor, kind of randomly trying to get it near the edges as well because we like it to look like it's going underneath the wall. And then he's just gonna work his way from one side of the floor all the way to the other side and just swirling the whole floor. Now when you're swirling it, that roller is just gonna glide across the top of the epoxy. You're still not pushing down. The roller is still doing all the work. And then you're just trying to roll and swirl randomly. There's really no rhyme or reason except for just trying to blend the whole floor and distribute the color evenly. We're using as, as, as random as we can be with the swirler, you know, the swirling technique. We're using small, little rounded swirls, big, huge circular swirls, oblong swirls. So just as random as you can get. Now, it doesn't really matter exactly how you swirl because when you come back the next day, this thing will have been moved, you know, been moving for four or five hours after we're done, and it's gonna it's gonna automatically self marbleize That's what we've really formulated our epoxy to do is self marbleize It's kind of very famous uh, for that aspect. And even now, notice it's not the most beautiful floor. It kind of has roller lines everywhere. All of those roller lines that you see will be gone the next day. The colors are blending together. It has a lot of depth to it. You notice the, the titanium and the black add a lot of depth to the darker areas and then that, that bright yellow just pops.